Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 3rd, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it wouldn't be a new year without some problems related to the change of the year. This time it's a Microsoft Exchange Server 2016 and 2019, I guess. With all the problems we had with Exchange Server last year, it decided to sort of go out with a bang of some sorts. Well, it wasn't really a security issue, more availability and uh, really interesting and odd bug here apparently exchange server internally represents dates as signed integers but this integer isn't like a unix timestamp or so like a number of seconds from a certain date instead it assembles that integer from the actual date and the first two digits of the integer are the last two digits of the year so this changed from 21 to 22 with the new year the problem problem being here is because this is a signed 32-bit integer, the largest number that can be represented is 2.1 billion and with uh, the year 2022 we are now at 2.2 billion which then of course caused the problem. If you're affected, email will be stuck in the transport queues and you'll see event ID 5300 and uh, 1100 and six there is a patch available from microsoft that you need to apply in order to solve this problem and well even with the new year some things stay the same and one is ancient tesla ancient tesla has been around for a few years and keeps adjusting brad sort of keeps track of that and wrote a diary with the latest observation as far as ancient tesla goes it's now sending data to Gmail accounts. Before that, it just used sort of random, likely compromised email accounts to send the exfiltrated data to. Now it uses exclusively Gmail accounts. These are either compromised or of course, they could also just be set up by the actor in order to receive the data. Gmail likely is less suspicious from a network traffic point of view than having outbound email to random mail servers. In particular, of course, with more and more email in general moving to cloud providers like Gmail. With the overall popularity of Gmail, this will make detection of these emails a little bit more difficult uh, given that, of course, you have a lot of legitimate uh, email going to Gmail as well. The content of the email, however, should give it away pretty easily that this is ancient Tesla. So if it goes through some kind of proxy or so, you should be able to detect and filter it. And talk about ancient Tesla, Jan took a look at his um, malware collection from last year and is comparing uh, three different uh, samples of ancient Tesla. One reason why ancient Tesla is so successful and has really been sticking around is that it is very flexible. It keeps changing. And just to illustrate the point, Jan is comparing uh, three samples that range in size from 8 kilobytes all the way up to 300 megabytes as they're experimenting essentially with sort of different obfuscation techniques in the one case just really appending a large amount of null bytes in order to possibly evade some anti-malware filters. Forensics on SSD drives has been challenging and there is some new work from researchers at Korea University in Seoul uh, talking about a new trick that an attacker could play in order to either hide malicious data or also gain access uh, to data that the user thought was deleted. The problem here is an issue that has come up before in forensics on these SSD disks is that uh, sometimes these disks are over provisioned, which means that if you are buying a drive that's advertised with one terabyte, it may have up to 25% of additional space on the drive that is then used in case some of the cells wear out in order to extend the lifetime of the drive. 
But as a user, you don't have any control over this. Uh, this is uh, done by the firmware. And one attack these researchers are discussing is when attackers actually modifying the firmware in order to either hide data on this over provision space or gains access to data in the over provision space in order uh, to read data that the victim thought was deleted. Apparently, data may stay in that space for uh, six month or even longer. It's really just a matter of whether or not it will get eventually overwritten, but there is sort of no active process that would go into this over provision space and occasionally delete some of the data. One technique that's being proposed here in order to detect some of these attacks is to monitor the ratio of valid and invalid data. If that suddenly changes, that could be an indicator of someone tampering with the firmware. Of course, uh, checking the integrity of the firmware would be another important step here, but uh, that's not easy to do uh, real time. It does require administrator access uh, to the affected system, but of course there are plenty of privilege escalation attacks and such that could potentially make this possible. And talking about firmware integrity, there's an interesting report by Iranian security company Amit Pardas uh, that discusses a rootkit that they found in the wild affecting HP's ILO cards. ILO, short for Integrated Lights Out, is the HP solution that provides remote access to servers and allows things like power cycling and remote uh, keyboard and uh, monitor access. So most of the servers have something like this installed. Well, the malware they found here, they describe it as a wiper. It does add additional modules to the firmware and does, according to the report, go through quite a bit of pain to make it difficult to actually flash a legitimate firmware on the device. If you're trying to upgrade your firmware, it will display the upgrade process and even display the new version number in the web UI. So this makes it really difficult to figure out uh, if you are infected or not. It has been an ongoing issue that a lot of times the administrative networks also used to connect to these kind of systems don't often have sort of the same level of monitoring and such as other network segments. They're often kind of assumed trusted networks. And of course, an assumption you don't verify often turns into a vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.